What is up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk, the world's most underrated podcast. And there is something about the underdog, but y'all see him. And I know the muscles are out in the short sleeve shirt. <laughs> Camera's just a little too high, so we can't see the raging biceps. I mean, a former standout outside linebacker at Newberry College, hashtag throwback, hashtag TBT. A, I mean, the fourth ranked men's physique athlete in the world. I am Charjo, aka Charlton Grant. What is up, sir? How are you and the family? And most importantly, how's how is the newborn? Hey, what's going on, man? Appreciate you having me on. Uh, the family is good. Uh, you know, got a newborn in the house, and uh, we're trying to adjust. You know, trying to get that sleep back, but uh, we we are managing. Uh, system uh very well my wife and i and it's getting better um as we all know when you have a a newborn in the house uh just some things you got to go through but it always gets better and it's always worth it so we're good and you know i'm only 24 i do not have a newborn of my own yet uh maybe the podcast is my baby so i totally i'll look (laughs) at it like that now you know jonathan you actually just got a newborn so i mean I'm sure you can relate to that statement. Now, how many months old is the newborn Charlton? One month. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He's fresh. (laughs) Fresh it is. And I mean, I guess it was a good thing that He's one month old and, you know, you weren't having to worry about this during prep, especially for the Mr. Olympia. Now, I feel like that would be a a nightmare worrying about those two. Now, you know, I kind of want to jump right into this and and ask a million dollar question. Why bodybuilding? Why bodybuilding? Well, that's a good question. That's a story that I like to share um, because actually I never really wanted to be a bodybuilder. Um, I... uh, I'm a military guy, so active duty, army officer. Um, you know, like you mentioned earlier, played college sports, uh, football. So, I mean, after the after football was over, didn't pursue, you know, the big dream of going to the league and playing, although it would have been awesome, but I uh, just didn't chase it. Um, so I stuck it out with the military, uh, which was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, and, you know, once, you, once you've been doing something for so long, you, you have that void, you know what I mean? So after I stopped playing football, I was like, dang, what, what am I going to do now, right? So uh, the closest thing to the, the, you know, playing football was the gym. So I just continued to uh, work out and, you know, just, just became a, a real fitness head um, in the gym and that, that kept me grounded. So um, what ended up happening was, a uh, pretty sad story was what led me to bodybuilding was when my dad was killed. So my dad was killed in 2017 in uh, December. And then, uh, man, I, I I was spiraling out of control. I, I was, you know, doing very well for myself with the military and everything. Uh, good reports and, you know, just overall doing good. Um, but once that happened to me, you know, that that really threw me for a loop. And I really saw myself going down really fast because, you know, he was my best friend, you know, and we had just, we had just uh, celebrated his birthday on November the 30th. And then I got a call on December, you know, seven saying that he was killed. Uh, So I had always had people in the gym ask me what I thought about bodybuilding. And my answer was no. (laughs) <laughs> nah, I, I like to, you know, I'm good with being buff, having fun, drinking, eating what I want to eat. You know, I, I was all about that life at that time. Um, but I think when that happened, I knew that somebody asked me again, and then I really thought about it. And I knew that it would take everything out of me in order to, you know, contribute to this. And it would help me. Um, and it actually did. You know, I just put everything into that prep. Uh, started in January, found me a coach. So it happened really fast. Um, like I said, because I was going down fast. So I needed to jump into something. So I did that. And that's, uh, you know, the rest is history. I just happened to be good at it. So that's a blessing. 
<laughs> I'd say you're pretty good at it, sir. <laughs> way better than, uh, I, I, mean, I was going to say way better than the rest of the contestants, but I actually didn't know that there were so many men's physique competitors. I mean, you literally smoked 30 other guys. So, I mean, you are pretty damn good. Now, I feel like everything does happen for a reason. Obviously, you know, I'm sorry to hear about your father and he is watching over you and proud of what you are doing because you are conquering the bodybuilding industry. Now, the other million dollar question, we're at $2 million, uh, gentlemen. Why men's physique? You know, I feel like men's physique gets uh, a lot of criticism and I have myself uh, found myself judging it. Um, but, you know, why pick men's physique? And then what do you say to people who, who don't think it should be a bodybuilding class per se? Uh, well, I like the first uh, well, the second question uh, about it, you know, question, should it be a category um, at all? And I would definitely say it should be. I mean, the league saw it, which it in turn, that's why it was, you know, it was birthed. You know, so and as we can see, you know, it has gained a lot of popularity since the beginning. Um, and, you know, you got guys who just who love working out, but don't want to put all that mass on them. You know, um, for me, that's why I joined Men's Physique, because I saw what was out there and saw what was more me. Um, I'm a military guy, so. I don't I, I've got to run. I've got to do all these different things. And me packing on all that, that that mask is, is not good for my knees. It, you know, it's just bad. You know, I need to be a, I need to be a badass soldier. You know what I mean? So I need to be able to do what I need to do without all that mask. I just need to be a, you know, a, a machine out there. So that's why I chose it. And you know what? That is fair. And you 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 silence the critic right there because I actually do agree. I mean, obviously they saw it fit to be a class. I mean, that was the answer that just needed to be there. And, you know, Ryan Terry was on the podcast and Ryan made an excellent point of saying that, you know, these men's physique guys are getting bigger and bigger and, and, and can even compete, you know, in some other divisions. So it's a very immersive and, you know, unique, obviously physique where you're mixed in terms of the bulkiness and the aesthetic. So I think I, I do see your point on that, sir. And I, and I think it's a good, a good start off too, because some people, they can choose people who don't have a whole lot of muscle mass. They can choose to enter, get into bodybuilding, figure out what a diet is, prepping for a show, yep. seeing, you know, going to the show, seeing how the different categories are, and then they can make a decision like, okay, this was a good intro now let me leapfrog into what my body is really you know has the potential for or not so i mean i think it's a good intro uh into it as well and i think it is and you know you have a big fan in that corner jonathan thinks your physique is absolutely phenomenal and wouldn't shut up about it uh, thank you man appreciate it <laughs> yeah, absolutely so i don't think that your physique lacks anything i think you have perfect uh symmetry like you're you're, you come in peeled, you come dialed in. But I do have a question. You said that you won't compete outside of anything right now because you're trying to keep your physique, you know, the way it is because you're in the Army. Do you see yourself when you retire going into a different division like the classic physique and, and really study that art of uh, classic posing? Um, as of right now, I still don't see it because, you know, by the time I retire, I have like, maybe like six more years before I can retire. Um, but by that time, I don't know where my path will lead me. I don't know if bodybuilding will be there or not. Um, and on the other aspect of it, you know, I got a big family, you know, so I got to take that into consideration uh, as far as bodybuilding and how that's going to affect my myself and my family. So, you know, with all that size and everything and all the possible uh, health conditions that can come with it. I, I just don't see it's, it's worth it for me right now uh, to do that. But, you know, um, you never know, but I, I, I can't see it right now. All right. All right. Well, if they offered you a invitation to the 212 right now, you wouldn't take it? I would not. Wow. I respect that. I, I really do respect that. I would go in there and get smoked. 
<laughs> well, don't say that. Don't say that now. I think you you were sleeping on your physique. Now, you know, another reason where I really feel like you stand out in the bodybuilding industry is is your process before stepping on on stage. And, and I've even read that you meditate and get in that correct mindset. And I've actually just started meditating too. You know, would you mind talking about getting into that mindset and what it takes to get into that mindset before you step in on stage in front of the whole world? Well, you just gotta find that place, you know, cause backstage, if you've been backstage, yep. it's a lot going on. Yeah. And when it's showtime, you need to be able to perform and you've got to get in your zone and block everything out, <laughs> go over your head, practice, you know, you've seen uh, you've seen yourself on a video a thousand times, you know, so you're replaying all that, all the things that you've corrected, uh, reminding yourself to not do that again, you know, and, and, and just get in your zone. Because at the end of the day, when you're on stage, that's it. You know, you got to be able to hit it. You don't get a second chance, maybe at the next show. But we don't have time for that. We got to take advantage of every moment that we we are given you know so we have to to be have ourselves if we can at at our best when we need to be now i totally agree on that mindset is key how how bad do you want it and like eminem says you have one shot or whatever the hell that <laughs> rap quote is now obviously you know <laughs> you 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 did phenomenal in the show but what were your thoughts about you know the new champ aaron banks taking out brandon and hendrickson in kind of a surprise fashion um i don't think it was a surprise hmm. to me i think that we knew it was going to be a battle for sure um just based off of what we saw in the previous year and then the year uh running up to it um so i i don't think it was a surprise um especially there were so many things that was a variable into it because you had tyler who was out here saying hey some things are going to change. Uh, they have been saying it for a few years. And, um, you know, we finally started seeing some of it because a lot of the guys, we had heard about it. They mentioned it. And we didn't really see a lot of change. It was like some of the same guys again. Um, but, you know, you know, when it, when it happened, it, it happened, you know. And I'm like, okay, I'm not surprised because they have been saying that we are looking for this. And that is not bodybuilding or men's physique rather um and not saying that uh brandon is is not men's physique he he's phenomenal you know he has a phenomenal uh structure shape and everything else i mean he's won it several times um so it, it i don't know you know i think it, it probably could um the judges just felt that aaron was the guy on that day you know it's like any given sunday if somebody is on you on if you off you off anybody can win or lose at, at this point everybody's so good you know all you need to do is come our hair off and somebody's right on your butt you know and could take your spot and that's what i plan to do i i i plan on i plan going going by and passing people who 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 are slipping and sleeping um so because i i'm going to be on because i just have that that mindset you know i've done i've done so many shows uh so we know how to we know how to dial it up i i've, I've been to a olympia to where i was off you know, knew i was off and we still placed so um I, I i believe that it's just a matter of time and the things that has happened thus far is kind of like a telling you know story of it um when i first competed in the olympia i got 12th place uh my very first showing um and then my second year i got 12th again uh, i was in the military school so i did a prep while i was in military school it was a accelerated graduate program that I had to do in order to get promoted. Um, so, I mean, and it was crazy, you know, uh, my, my wife, she'll tell you, she, she has no idea how, how I did it because late nights and I was schoolwork and still, still meal prepping and working out and doing cardio at 3 a.m. in the morning. And 
it is is nuts, you know. Um, so, and then here we are. Number four. I had high expectations going into 2022. Just didn't know where I was going to land. My first, uh, my mindset was to get in the first call out. Um, long as I, I I did that, well, not just first call out. Let me back a little bit. I wanted to make it to finals. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that because I'm an ambitious person, and my 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 mom, she's still here, right? And she's like one of my, if not my number one supporter outside of my my wife um, and my and my my daughters. Um, you know, she's been to every show pretty much. You know, so uh, I was tired of them buying those final tickets and me not being on stage. So I, I have put it inside my head, like, you know, we know you can do it. Let's do it. That was the goal. I wanted to be on that final stage. And, and when it happened, it was just like, oh my goodness, that was the celebration, just making it to finals. And we celebrate short-term victories, right? But now it's like, okay, now what else are we getting ready to do? You know, so. And you beat a few Underdog Talk alumni who were astounding to me, Alex Toplin, Ryan Terry. I mean, the class is getting very immersive and very deep in men's physique. Right. I and mean, you got some superstars who are who are sitting there that you're passing right now. So I'm very excited to see who you pass next because I think, like you said, people are sleeping and you know as i always open up and this is the underdog talk there is nothing more hungry than the underdog now jonathan ask your question about the military because i actually am intrigued in that one yeah so i i seen on march 10th that you posted a, a picture of you actually in your uniform so before you even told us you were in the army i was already tracking that i was ready to ask this question because being a military guy myself i don't even know if i should stand at attention or, you know, can't stay oh. seated. But uh, <laughs> so to, to prep for such a prestigious show as the Olympia, as active duty major in the Army, that's got to be difficult, just like you said. How exactly and how difficult was it to prep for such a prestigious show for like the Mr. Olympia? You just have to, man, when you set a goal, there's only one other thing to do time manage you got to make a plan man and if you make a plan and stick to it then you should be successful now i'm not saying that the plan that you make is always you know going to be 100 percent. yeah life is going to happen and you have, but you got to be able to adjust on the fly you got to keep the stress down and don't worry about it just know it's still going to be okay and still do what you continuing to do like for example if i miss a meal or i miss a cardio session um i'm not going to get too terribly upset but i do know that i'm gonna make it up <laughs> i may not be able to make up that meal but i'm definitely going to make up that cardio you know so I, I i don't allow those type of things to bother me to where it gets i get inside my own head and then it hinders the whole process. I mean, like I said, it's, it's a big mind thing, you know. Um, but overall, to answer the question, how do I how do I do that? I just make a plan. Uh, you know, everybody doesn't doesn't have the same resources, right? So, fortunately, I have a wife, um, and she loves to cook for me. So, all I have to do is say, "Hey, babe, this is the plan," and she's ready to do it. You know, uh, so she, she's helped me out so much. Um, you know, up until now, we, uh, I, I got a, a meal prep sponsorship now with long life meal prep. So that kind of took the, the pressure off of her a little bit, which was right on time because of our new son. Um, so, I mean, everything happens for a reason, you know, yes. but at the end of the day, as long as you, as long as you, you make a plan and, and you execute nine times out of 10, you'll, you'll be successful. You'll get what you're looking for or something close to it. And, and sir, you have me ready to run through a brick wall. Now, two <laughs> things before we even wrap, start wrapping this up. First of all, is that a dumbbell around your neck? Because that is pretty damn dope. 
And second of all, I didn't even realize, are you in a freaking home gym right now, sir? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is this is my other baby. <laughs> uh, my home gym. My my uh my 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 gym that I go to when I'm not at home is uh DMV Iron. I'm located in uh Virginia. So okay. yeah, so I don't know if you've ever heard of DMV Iron, but it's a phenomenal facility. Um and you should check it out whenever you come in the area. But yeah, I um I'm pretty proud of this. Uh we We've uh, actually just redid it. So we've got a lot of new things in here. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very proud of, of what we got. I mean, it all started at we had the, the pandemic, right? You know, nobody had anything in their house, right? Um, I felt like as a pro, you gotta at least have a bench in your house or something, you know? But um, that's when I really started, you know, maybe I need to have like a little in-home gym. And I started building from there and then it just keep it just kept got uh, kept getting serious and more serious and then uh reallocating the funds and, and here we are. I even got a my my big surprise of, of this year is the sauna. <laughs> what the hell? I honestly thought you were in a commercial gym. It looks so spacious back there. Good lord of mercy. I must need to become a pro bodybuilder now to be able to get a gym inside my house. Now, Charjo, ending it, sir, you've kind of seen it all in the bodybuilding industry and in life in general. So a two-pronged question. What is your biggest tip for success in life? And then what is your biggest tip for someone who is looking to become a pro bodybuilder like you once were, sir? Well, to be successful in life, I think that you have to have something to believe in. Um, you know, whatever that belief is, you have to have faith in something, you know, because when you when you come across those tribulations, which is going to happen because life happens, you need something to fall back on. Uh, a lot of times we get hit with different things or a multitude of things all at the same time. And next thing you know. You know, if we don't have a good foundation of the faith that what we believe in, then we crumble and waste away, you know. Uh, so that's how I ended up doing this bodybuilding, because my faith led me to where I'm at today. Um, and, you know, uh, you're going to get bumps and bruises. You know, it's cliche, but you just get up, dust yourself off and keep it trucking. You know, e everything that happens. You, it happens to a reason whether you're supposed to learn from that life lesson, you know, and uh, take something from it, you know, to make it to make, you know, the next decision better, you know. Um, so I would just say you need to believe, have have belief in something and also have belief in you and you can do anything. Absolutely. Uh, as far as if you want to be a professional bodybuilder, you've got to have discipline luckily for me i had discipline already instilled in me through all these years of the military yeah. that that is a that's what you know gave me a, a leg up if you will uh as far as being disciplined that i learned from the military uh so being disciplined uh you know working hard man you got to be a beast you got to be an animal you can't just be in the gym just you know in there pushing you know you you got to have a, a purpose for what you do why you're doing it and you got to get after it you know you've got to work hard you got to hit the weights hard you got to hit the cardio hard you got to every you got to do everything that you need to do in order to make it to to the pro stage i mean because at, at, at this t day and time there's a lot of people out there that's good yeah you know? and it, you, you've got to you've got to you bring your best you know some people aren't genetically blessed so they got to work twice as hard you know so their discipline has to be like really up there and their their determination and drive has to really be up there if they if they're not genetically blessed because they're fighting genetics up there as well you know so i would definitely say you know be disciplined in what you're doing and uh never give up just keep going if that's what you want to do Keep doing it until you get the result that you want. So, Charger, you're saying I'm going to have to work twice as harder. I know you looked at me when you said bad genetics. I saw it. <laughs> I saw you give me a stare, sir. 
And I, I totally agree, though. It, it does not happen overnight. And, you know, one thing I've been blessed to learn from these elite bodybuilders is it takes time. It is not something that you just click your fingers and tap your heels and it's going to happen overnight. And, you know, we had Branch Warren on the podcast. And when I think of pure hard work, someone going to that gym, that's what you need to be like. You need to be going in there and you need to be slamming some weights. And you need to be loving the process. And another thing I've learned, and I know you can agree with this more than anyone, bodybuilding is a choice. It is a choice. So if you put in how much you want, no one else is driving you. It is a you sport. Now, Charjo, before we go, the floor is yours, sir. What is the, the social medias where we can follow you? What are the codes we can use to support you? Anything big happening, obviously, besides the baby? I mean, anything else going on, the floor is yours, sir. Got it. Uh, well, like I said at the very beginning, man, thank you for having me on. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Um, you know, just getting getting a little bit of insight on, on one of the underdogs out there. You know, I still feel like I am for some reason. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, my my Instagram is I am Charjo um, and I have a YouTube channel that I don't really put a lot on, but need to get there. You know, it's all about that promotion, that social media. We've got to do it right. You know, that's why you do this, you know, so I've got to get on your not so much as in podcasting, but, you know, just putting some good content out there so people can actually see uh, what's going on with me. You know, at one point in time, I didn't think anybody cared, but uh, somebody told me that you'd be surprised. So we'll pick it up on that end. Um, I'd like to thank all my my sponsors, uh, you know, who have uh, with me through my journey. Uh, I even have some have some new ones uh, come aboard uh, after Olympia. Um, and all of my codes are on my Instagram page and the link tree. So feel free, go ahead and get you some discounts, man, some percentages off on anything that you think that I offer that will help you. So I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, just, uh, we've got a couple of shows coming up, uh, that we have planned. I'm definitely going to do the, uh, Palmetto Pro in South Carolina which is in like seven weeks, I think, something like that. Uh, I'm going home because I'm originally from South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to do that. So this is the second year that they held the show. The first time they had it, I couldn't do it. I was in military school. Um, so I'm home now. So I want to do that one. And I'm also doing a DC Pro uh, June 10th, June 11th. Yeah, we'll do that here. So those are the two shows that I have planned. Will I do any more? I have no idea, um, but those are the two that I know that I'm going to do. Alexa, play I'm Coming Home by Diddy Dirty Money. Um, for the person to use one of the codes or buy one of the things that Charjo is a sponsored athlete of, we will send you a signed autograph and a box full of goodies. I mean, please also go check out I Am Charjo on Instagram. There's some good content, some inspiring content. And sir, I better see that YouTube up and running. I mean, come on now. How bad do you want it? Come on, Tarjo. I Let's know get the people going, man. Yeah, yeah. Everybody needs a push in some area. Hey, well, I will be ready for when that YouTube starts dropping again, guys. Charjo, the man himself. I mean, I just gotta say one more time, man. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for taking your time. Guys, don't forget to like comment and subscribe on this video until next time underdog and charge you.